In the previous videos, we've seen that we may use the graphical approach to solve the games in which each player has two strategies. Now here we are going to talk about how we may use linear programming to solve the games in which each player has more than two strategies. So let's start. In this example, we are going to look at a game that should be very familiar to you. In this game, two players simultaneously say one of the three words, stone, paper, or scissors. And then uh, if both players say the same thing, then the game is a draw. However, um, somebody wins the game according to the following rule. Scissors defeats paper, paper defeats stone, and stone de defeats or breaks scissors. And then the player who wins, let's say, will gain $1. And this is the reward matrix for the game. So the role player has three possible strategies, stone, paper, and scissors. And then column player obviously has the same three strategies. You may notice here that in this game, there is no saddle point. Since there is no saddle point in that game, both player must play randomized strategies to maximize the reward from the game. So for um, the role player, the strategy is denoted by x1 up to x3. Um, for example, x1 means the probability that role player chooses stone, and so on. Similarly, for column player, the strategy is defined as these three decision variables, y1, y2, and y3, with y1, for example, means the probability that column player chooses stone. Now let us construct the row player's linear programming. Given this reward matrix, if we are the row player, obviously we cannot control what strategy the column player will choose. So uh, the column player may choose stone, the column player may choose paper, the column player may choose scissors. And this, um, these three possible strategies become the constraints for the role player. So if the column player chooses stone, it means that um, the expected reward for the role player become 1 times x2 minus 1 times x3. Similarly, if the column player chooses paper, then the expected reward for the role player equals minus x1 plus x3. And finally, if column player chooses scissors, then the expected reward for the row player equals x1 minus x2. And then the column player will try among these three possible strategies that the column player may choose. The column player will choose the one that minimizes the reward of the row player, right? Because column player tries to minimize the reward for row player. So column will choose among stone, paper, and scissors that gives the minimum reward for the role player. In other words, this is the expected reward if the column plays stone. This is the expected reward for row if column plays paper. This is the expected reward for role player if column plays scissors. And then column player will try to find among these three the one that is minimum. That's why we see the notation V less than or equal to, because you can see that V here would be the minimum among these three possible strategies, among these three expected reward for the row uh, with respect to three possible strategies by the column. Okay, so that's what the column may do. And then what the row wants to do is that the row player wants to push this V value as high as possible. So even though the column tries to minimize the reward of the row player to become as low as possible, the row player tries to push that V value as high as possible. That's why the objective for the row player is maximize the V with the constraint that the column player tries to pick the strategy that will minimize the V among these three possible strategies that the column player has. And of course, uh, for role player, 
the sum of the probability of playing stone, paper, and scissors must add up to 1. And then finally, for the sign restrictions, the probability must be greater than or equals to 0. But the V value or the reward for the role player is a URS variable. Means that it may be positive, it may be negative. Because if you are looking at the reward matrix, we do have negative values. So we cannot say for sure whether the reward for role player would be positive or negative. Similarly, let's build the linear programming model for column player. If we are in the position of the column player, we cannot control which strategy that the role player would play. So the role player might uh, play stone, might play paper, might play scissors. Suppose the role player plays stone, then the expected reward for role player is minus y2 plus y3. Again, remember that these values are expected reward for the role player. So this is the expected reward for role player. And then if the role player plays paper, the expected reward for the role player equals y1 minus y3. So this is the expected reward for the role player with respect to the decision of the column. Okay, so the role player among these three possible strategies will try to pick the one that maximizes his reward, right? Because these rewards are all from the viewpoint of the role player. So the role player will try to pick among these three the one that is the highest. But then, because we are now looking at this game from the viewpoint of the column player, even though the role player tries to minimize his or her reward, we want to minimize that. Sorry, what I meant was even though the role player tries to maximize his or her reward, as the column player, we will try to minimize that to become as low as possible. Same as before, the sum of the probabilities of the possible strategies for column must add up to 1, and then um, the sign restrictions they are all must be greater than or equals to 0, and then the value of W is URS. Now if we look at these two models, the linear programming models for role player and the linear programming model for the column player, we will notice that uh, one linear programming is the dual of the other. So if you recall the concept of duality, you know that for one linear programming, there is a dual model for that. And then if you take the dual of that dual, you will get the original problem. So the dual and the primal, they are um, related to each other. If you take the dual of this, you will get that. If you take the dual of that, you will get this back. Okay, And these two are the dual of each other. There is a theory that is called the dual theorem that says, um, especially we are going to take this part, it says that if we have reached the optimal solution, then the objective function value for the primal, in this case V, will be equal to the objective function of the dual, in this case W. In other words, if we have reached the optimal solution for this problem, we will get the same value for V and W. W. Now let us solve the uh, game of stone, paper, and scissors. What we are going to do here is that first we are going to add the reward matrix um, by a number that is called C. C is the absolute value of the most negative entry in the reward matrix. So this is our original reward matrix, and then we notice that our most negative entry is minus 1. So we are adding each element in this matrix with 1, such that now we do not have any negative matrix anymore. The advantage of this is that now the objective function value V and W is no longer URS variable. The objective function value V and W will be greater than or equals to zero. So it's easier to handle rather than um, handling URS variable. 
So after we modify the reward matrix, of course, the linear programming model, the coefficient changes as well. For example, the first constraint here um, with respect to the column player playing stone, now it becomes 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2. So after you modify the matrix, do not forget to change the LP model. Or from the beginning, you modify the matrix first and then you construct the model. Okay, do the same thing for uh, the LP model for the column player. So now after we use this modified reward matrix, now we are going to kind of simplify the variables a bit. So we realize that the sum of all variables must be 1. So then we just replace x3 equals 1 minus x1 minus x2. So now we eliminate this constraint. Similarly, we do the same thing for um, the column linear programming model. We uh, eliminate this constraint by replacing y3 to become equals 1 minus 1 minus y2. So this is our new LP model for the role player and the column player. So let me just put a note here before we continue. Once you have got the linear programming model for the role player and a model for the column player, actually you may just solve those models using simplex algorithm. Then you may obtain the optimal solution for role player and column player. However, the purpose of this section is to show that we may use some of the duality concepts to solve the problem, obtain the optimal solutions without going through simplex algorithm. Okay, so in the duality topic, there is something called complementary slackness. Complementary slackness says that if we have a feasible solution x in primal, which consists of x1, x2, up to xn, and we have a dual feasible solution y, y1, y2 up to ym, then x is primal optimal and y is dual optimal if and only if these two requirements are satisfied. So the first requirement says that if we have m constraints in the primal problem, it means that for each constraint we have the select variables from s1, s2 up to sm, then the multiplication of those uh, slack variable with the corresponding dual variable, we also have m dual variable, same with the number of constraint with primal. So s1 times y1 must be 0, s2 times y2 must be 0, up to sm times ym must also be 0. On the other hand, for each primal variable, we have the variable from x1 up to xn. Each excess variable in the dual, so um, for each constraint in the dual, we have an excess variable. Remember that the number of constraints in the dual equal to the number of variable in the primal. So if in the primal we have x1, x2 up to xn, then in the dual variable we have n constraints as well. And for each of those constraints, we have excess variable. Now the multiplication of ej times xj must also be 0 for j equals 1 to up to n. So this is uh, the concept of complementary slackness. So let's use the complementary slackness concept to solve the stone, paper, and scissors problem. However, to do this, we need to kind of making a guess. So we conjecture that because this is kind of a fair game. So in the original reward matrix, before we modify the reward matrix, the value of V and W equals zero. So this is before we modify the reward matrix. The person who loses will pay $1. The person who wins will get $1. And if it is a draw, then um, uh, each person gets zero. But then we modify the reward matrix by adding one to each element in the reward matrix. So now we conjecture that the value of V prime here and W prime equals one. Okay. Again, uh, the second point here, we again make a guess. We conjecture that the rows 
constraint of A and B, they are binding constraints. Binding means that in the optimal solution, these signs become equality. So now that you have got the value of V prime equals one, so this is equal one, this is also equal one, you may solve these two equations with two variables to obtain this solution, x1 equals one third, x2 equals one third, and v prime equals one. Now we are using the concept of complementary slackness because x1 and x2 has a value which is non-zero. We may use the complementary slackness concept to say that e1 and e2 for the first and second constraint of the dual problem must be zero. Okay, in other words, the columns constraint of A and B must equal, must uh, have the sign of equality or binding. Um, if you are confused why we have E here when uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any excess variable there, well, remember that you need to uh, convert this problem into a standard form first. So that's why we will have excess variable and then you can say based on the complementary slackness E1 and E2 equals zero such that these two constraints must be binding. Okay now uh, because we assume that W prime equals one so this is one and this is also one you assume W prime equals one and then we guess these constraints are binding, you may solve these two equations with two variables to obtain this result. And then based on the dual theorem, if you have two feasible solutions for primal and dual that result in the same objective function value, it means that you have obtained the optimal solution for the primal problem, in this case the role player, and then also the dual problem in this case, the column player. So the conclusion is that the value of the stone, paper, scissors game is um, one for V prime and W prime. But then uh, because this happens after we modify the reward matrix. So the actual value of the game equals zero. So we just take uh, this value one minus one again to get the original value of the game before we modify the reward matrix. The optimal strategy for role player is one third, one third, one third. And then similarly for column player, the optimal solution is one third for all strategy. So if you're playing this game, it means that you need to randomize your strategy equally likely between stone, paper, and scissors. So we have seen how we may use the concept in duality complementary slackness and also the result from dual theorem to obtain the value of the game and the optimal strategy for both row player and column player. In the next video, we are going to look at some examples of the other games and then we are going to solve those uh, games to obtain the optimal solution for the players, again using the concepts of duality. So see you in the next one. Thank you.